Every year in the NFL, it's a new team. As far as goals go, we have one. Putting a f***ing ring on our finger. Welcome to the Buccaneers Observer Podcast. This is Ralph Phillips. I'm Molly Bay. Today is January 1st, 2021. I hope everybody had a great New Year's out there. New Year's Eve, everybody was safe, stayed home. So you don't get a uh, get the sickness. Did you see the <laughs> ball drop in New York? Yeah, of course you did. We sat there and watched it together. You know what though? I don't think I watched it. No, yeah, I didn't see the ball drop. I, yeah, I was like, "Where's it? Where's the ball at?" It, it was like they didn't show it or something. But it was so sad and pathetic. There was nobody out there. They everybody that was out there was in cordoned off in little boxes. Oh, God. Oh, it was so sad, so sad. And, uh, you know, it's <laughs> crazy, man. I don't know what we're doing anymore. Weird, weird planet. So, anyhow, hopefully 2021 will be more, can't say entertaining, because it was 2020 was quite entertaining. I don't know how we're going to beat that. Maybe a nuclear war or something. But <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> I feel like nothing's off the table, so stop it. <laughs> Well, here we are, 2021, but the good thing is the Buccaneers are going to the playoffs, so everything else doesn't really matter. You know, I, 2020 was, I mean, all things considered, it was not that, I mean, memorable for sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, One of my aunts on Facebook said, I've never had a bad year, and I like that. You know, the 2020 sucked for a lot of reasons, but there were some good things, too. So it's always a silver lining. Yeah, the good things are we got Tom Brady and we're going to the playoffs. I know. I <laughs> mean, how do you beat that? I don't... Win the Super Bowl. Hmm? Yeah, mm-hmm. But then that's 2021 that's Super Bowl. true. Or, yeah. yeah. It happened in 2021. Mm-hmm. 2020 season. We have a great, great football season. Great football season. So that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about football. Believe it or not. It's a football podcast. What? Yeah. I'm not talking about the sickness or celebrations on New Year's Eve, but I hope everybody had a great New Year's Eve. We're going to get to some stuff here tonight. We got some news for you from the Buccaneers, some dramatic news. Molly has been holding me hostage with it. She mm-hmm. won't let me look at Twitter. She's mm-hmm. like, there's a bunch of stuff I want you to, I want to not tell you see. on the podcast. I know. So this is completely organic. Compl- Ralph's that's, reaction. That's how we like to do it here. It's all <laughs> organic. Uh, we're going to cover the t- uh, Atlanta game coming up. A little bit in that. We've already covered it a couple of weeks ago, so there's not a whole lot we're going to cover on it. Mm-hmm. And then we're going or we're going to talk about the Detroit game first, right? Yeah. And then we're going to, what are we doing? Detroit game, the news, then Atlanta game? Yes. But I do have a follow-up slash a fact check. This fact check, from, follow-up. This is on you, Ralph, I think. Uh, in our Instant Reaction podcast. Mm-hmm. You called Jeremiah Ledbetter, Jeremy Ledbetter. Yeah. So. Well, I was confusing the Pearl Jam songs. I know. That's what I was just thinking. (laughs) Jeremy's more. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Does anybody know the lyrics to Ledbetter? Nobody does. I don't even think Pearl Jam knows the lyrics. They just mumble stuff. Yes, it's so. still a beautiful song, no matter what he's mumbling. So this is true. It's true. How how you can do that? I don't know. Make a beautiful song out of mumbling. He did it. Wayful, <laughs> fruits are gray. No, that's black. I don't know. I've got, <laughs> I've got my my grunge all mixed up over here. Ralph's a big Pearl Jam fan, by the way. Yes, big Pearl Jam fan. Hey, you know we never went over the Thanos stuff. No, we didn't. No. Well, we'll have to do that in the off season. I'll, okay, I'll do a mean. little little ten minute segment on my okay. thing. Stuff. Well, I got to get the pictures and all that stuff because oh, I'll say okay. stuff and people will be like, "Nah, he's just making that up." Like, no, huh? I got pictures. I got receipts, man. <laughs> <laughs> why, why, why Ralph cried at the end <laughs> of Avengers? So embarrassing. She loves to tell that story too. She's like, Ralph never cries about anything, but he teared up. Thanos I'm just taking away the attention from the fact that I don't cry about anything. You cry about everything. No, I don't. Listen, you know, as far as know. women go, what do you always say, Ralph? I have the emotional range of a pretzel. Yeah, fair enough. 
So. But you do cry over some weird stuff. Uh, I cry when I get mad. Mm-hmm. Well, you used to cry a lot when you were a kid, right? You'd get, yeah, I was a crier. Yeah, every little thing made so you cry. And then I just learned to suppress just it all. Stonewall it. Shove it down. Yeah. Cobra Kai never die. That's right. You like my shirt? I do. Yes. You go up all there. You know, was you were all upset gotta... about not getting a Tom Brady jersey yeah. for Christmas. I was a little upset about not getting a Cobra Kai shirt. <laughs> I thought for sure. And you know what? I had in my Amazon cart, we're going to talk about my Amazon cart, uh, the Cobra Kai like, headband I was going to get as a stocking stuffer for you, too. Oh. <laughs> but what I didn't. Ha- what happened? I just I wasn't worthy? I forget. You got the coal instead? You got that yeah. chunk of coal? I think you were bitching about how much money I spent. <laughs> it really <laughs> was. This was a crazy year. I'm just sitting there watching the bank account go, <laughs> no, stop, please. I don't even know where it all went. Yeah, Under Cobra the Kai Christmas shirt. tree. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Never die. The new season is out. Haven't watched it yet. Kind of scared of it. Look, I like the back of it. No mercy. Uh, there it is. Yeah. Couldn't cool. see it. The microphone was right in the way. Oh, wow. That's okay. All right. So the Detroit game got the uh, things I found interesting videos out. I was actually surprised that I was able to get three videos because I started off and I was to halftime and I only had enough for one video and that was only seven minutes. So I was thinking, well, I'm only going to get another seven minutes out of that. But then I ended up getting 15 minutes out of the second half and they ended up making two videos out of it. So it was a very, very interesting game <laughs> to say the least. I'm surprised because usually the wins are not mm-hmm. that good. And then, you know, especially like a blowout like that. Yes. A lot of things I didn't see in the broadcast, so that's normal, but just the feel of the game was so much different on the All-22 than it was on the broadcast. You know, on the broadcast, it was basically us just beating them down and, you know, they look like crap. And then, you know, we put in our uh, second stringers in the second half and, you know, they ended up putting their third string quarterback (laughs) in the second half and it just was like bleh. But on the All-22... There was a lot of stuff going on. Well, one of the big things that was going on was Detroit was extremely pissy uh, in that second half. Man, they were starting a lot of fights and doing a lot of nasty stuff. Uh, JPP actually got called for a penalty. Uh, what was it? Unsportsmanlike conduct, I think it was. And they didn't show it on the broadcast. All they showed was kind of the aftermath, you know, a bunch of guys like, hanging out and pushing each other and all that. Now, this was the Herb Miller interception, yes, the interception. right? Yes. Okay. And so I, I looked at it from every different angle I could get to try and figure out what exactly happened because on all 22, you see JPP, he doesn't do anything. He's just kind of, uh, you know, walking towards the guy who intercepted and then it cuts. So I'm like, well, where was the, so I, anyhow, I spent way too long trying to figure out what was, what happened. And it, it took me about 20 minutes to figure it all out. And I had to do it by aligning helmets, you know, because I couldn't see numbers, you know, and just stuff that was, you know, kind of partly on screen and figuring it out. So anyhow, what happened was 73, their rookie, oh gosh, I can't remember his name, their right right guard. <clears throat> Helm and Golston had been going at it all day. Golston had just been beating the mess out of him. So did JPP. That'll and, happen. And uh, there was a play not long before that where this uh, 73 had uh, did a blindside block on Golston. Golston was uh, running and uh, he was running towards the tackle and the uh, 73 saw him and targeted him and ran over and just decleated him. And he hit, he hit Golston so hard that he fell and, almost fell into Levante David, who was tackling somebody and going at full speed. And it could have been a really, really bad collision. But uh, he got flagged for that. But again, the broadcast didn't show it. You know, and I went back and I looked at the uh, broadcast on Game Pass and they didn't show it. What they showed was uh, Matthew Stafford on the sideline just standing there in his civilian clothes. That's so annoying. Oh, God, it drives me crazy when they do that. I mean, there's so much that goes on in a football and they show so many. I w- I'm going to make a clip one day 
of all the extraneous bull crap that they show, you know, like a coach just standing there or, you know, a, a zoom close up on some guy's face in the huddle. Well, you know? remember when we were watching that game, I think with Derek Carr and he got hit in the groin and they spent like two minutes zoomed in on him. <laughs> oh, he, he was like messing with, with his drunk. Yeah. <laughs> you, you were laughing so hard. <laughs> I, about was, that. And I was like, why? Give the man some dignity. But yeah, so 73 had blindsided Gulston and decleated him. I mean, it was a it was a nasty hit. It was it to the point I was like, ooh, I wouldn't have been mad if they thrown him out of the game for that one. That was pretty bad. Reminded kind of reminded me of uh, Warren Sapp when he did it to the Green Bay guy back in the that was that the nineties, and everybody had a conniption. It was something like that. Well, anyhow, during the the play, it was the interception. I'm pretty sure. Uh, 73 comes over and he headbutts Colston. I mean, just mm. walks up to him and headbutts him. They, they were jawing at each other and he walks over and headbutts him and then pushes him. And then Shaquille Barrett saw it. Shaquille Barrett runs over. He pushes 73. Well, 62, I think it was. I, I got the numbers right now somewhere. He comes up and hits Colston in the back. Colston's got his back turned to him and he hits, the, he hits Colston in the back and knocks him down. And that's when JPP saw it. And JPP comes walking over, and then that's when the, it clipped. But uh, I'm saying all that by piecing it together from different angles and and uh, helmet shots and stuff because you know you couldn't get a clear picture of it, mm-hmm. and they never replayed it. It, it. it really pisses me off that when they do that, you got all these cameras in the stadium, and they can replay a catch from 50 different angles. But when something happens on the field, they go, "Yeah, here we're going to show a guy sitting on the sideline picking his nose." Yeah, you know, and you're like, "What?" The- it's not, that's not what I signed up to look at. Mm-hmm. So anyhow, they were really chippy and they were doing things. I, I showed it in the uh, things I found interesting video. They were doing a lot of chop blocks and they, they did more chop blocks than I've seen since, since the eighties. They, they used to be big in like the eighties, these chop blocks where the, the line one would just go at people's legs, you know, and block you them. You can't really do that anymore, right? Yeah, you can do it. It's still, but it's not, it's not considered a real nice thing to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, because it can't it can't hurt you if you're not expecting it. And it but our guys were very good at, you know, not getting hurt by it. And, and for the most part, they didn't get blocked that way either. You know, JPP did get one time. He jumped up like he was going to jump. No, he jumped up to block the pass when the guy. And so he when he came down, he kind of rolled on the guy. And he like fell on his face. Mm. Hey, you didn't finish the story about the flag on JPP with the unnecessary roughness. Yeah, so it wasn't JPP. Uh, from everything I could tell, J- JPP just walked over and kind of squashed it by being JPP. <laughs> it, it wasn't nobody wanting to fight JPP, that's for sure. And I just love him so much. Yeah, and from what I could tell, it wasn't none of our guys. I saw Barrett push seventy three for headbutting Golston. Remember when Ryan Jensen got called for that headbutt like mm-hmm. earlier in the year? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah, this one was worse than that one. Yeah. Because I mean, that one with Jensen was just, he just it was basically. Nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so anyhow. They him with this face mask. They, they were doing a lot of stuff like that where they were just being pissy. And understandably so, because they were getting their butts handed to them. And it was a, you know, it was basically garbage time. The whole second half was garbage time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they were frustrated and we were just continuing to grind them into the dirt. But you didn't see you didn't see that on the broadcast, you know, and it was a a real uh, gosh, I don't even know what the word to say for it. real tense, you know, hmm. the whole second half. You could just tell, you know, almost every play there was something where guys were pushing each other, and it was just uh, it was it was not a very good game as far as sportsmanship goes. Okay, so. I have been complaining about the wide receivers and, and, and the receivers, including the running backs, dropping the ball, you know, all year long. I've been saying, you know, we just, we're dropping way too many passes. And of course, you know, dropped passes are, depends on what site you look at. They're going to give you different figures because it's a subjective thing. To me, a dropped pass is any time a receiver can get his hand on a damn ball, it's a dropped pass. And even if he doesn't touch it, it's a drop pass to me if he could have caught it and he just didn't try. You know, to me, that's a drop pass. You know, like the one where Mike Evans stuck his arms out and the ball went a foot on the other side. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. To me, that's a dropped pass because yeah. he should have caught it. 
that was the difference in this game. We got up, what were we, 40 to 7 or some crap like that? 40 to zip in the first half because we didn't drop balls. We didn't do anything nor, out of the ordinary. We just caught the damn ball. And that we, if we play like that going into the playoffs, we're going to steamroll. Nobody's going to be able to stop us. Hell, nobody can stop us now, but we're going to be putting up 40 points in the first half. It wasn't that Detroit was back there just, you know, with their thumbs up their butts. Yeah, they really tried hard in the first half, and they had great coverage on our guys. There was a few times they didn't, but – Brady was so accurate. He was crazy, stupid accurate in this game. I mean, you know, I've, I've always <clears throat> been saying all year long that he's just incredibly accurate. It's amazing how accurate he is. But this game, he was just like super active, accurate. You know, he was like, like 10 plus. He was he was at 11 from 1 to 10. He was at 11. <laughs> he had, I think, one bad pass, maybe two. And, you know, it's, it's even questionable if they were bad passes. You know, like, eh, you know. it was catchable, but... He was just, he was throwing in the tight coverage that you were just like, wow, there's no way they could have defended that. It was awesome. But the guy, our receivers caught the ball. We didn't have dropped passes in the first half that I recall. You know, and so that's, to me, that was the difference in the game is that our guys caught the passes that they were supposed to catch. Yeah. And Brady was super accurate. Everybody will say, oh, Detroit sucks and all that good stuff. And yeah, yeah I mean, they're, they're, they're not the best team in the world, but it wasn't like they was blown coverage. You know, when, when he threw that touchdown to Godwin, yeah, I mean, that was, they, Godwin was covered uh, mm -hmm. when he threw the touchdown to Gronkowski. That guy was right there. I mean, he had his hand in, you know, in between Gronkowski's arms uh, when he got that long bomb to Mike Evans. Mike Evans was covered. You know, that guy was right there. Yeah, there was a couple of times where uh, the defender fell down and the one time Mike Evans was completely wide open there. Uh, there was another <laughs> time and here was a mistake on Tom Brady's part. Oh God, I was just, it was heartbreaking. It was uh, in, in the first quarter. Uh, Godwin went across the middle. He caught an eight yard pass. It was like, hmm. well, <clears throat> on, you're tired. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> on both the left and right side, uh, Scotty Miller, and I think it was Antonio Brown. It might have been Chris Godwin. I can't remember. They, they both had go, to, go routes where they you know just run down the field, run down the sidelines. Boom. And they were both completely wide open. Oh, no. And they both had their arms up. <laughs> and Tom Brady threw it across oh, the middle for eight uh, yards. I was just like, oh, he no. He checked it down. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we they had a couple of breakdowns in coverage. And we had a couple of breakdowns in coverage. Uh, lucky mm -hmm. for us. Uh, their quarterbacks really suck because you know we had there was a couple times where they had guys completely open we had busted coverage guys completely open they didn't see them a lot of it was due to the pressure from the defensive line too though do you think it would have been a different game with Matt Stafford no <laughs> no that, they might have scored a touchdown maybe okay because yeah. we did shut out their offense yeah we did yeah the only thing that scored was special teams and mm -hmm. me and Molly had said you know she watched the Detroit uh, Lions before and and gave her a summary of how she thought it was going to go and and what was it you said about that kick return? Uh, he could be trouble mm -hmm. and he uh yeah he's got like six hundred yards like return yards on kick returns. Yeah. Outrageous. Yeah, and a combination between a really good kick returner and a team that doesn't seem to give a shit about special teams and that's what you get. You get a touchdown <laughs> and it wasn't mm -hmm. you know it wasn't like the guy did he did nothing. Spectacular, you know. It wasn't like he was weaving out between guys. I showed it on the things I found interesting video. He he got on the numbers and then ran straight down the number. He just ran straight. That's what it was. We had like five guys miss tackle him. A couple guys didn't even try to tackle him. <laughs> and our punter, oh, <laughs> had God. opinion, which I was telling you about this, and I said, and our punter had a chance, and you went, man. Uh, what I never want to see the punter Yeah, you was like, man, I hope you didn't try to tackle him. I said, well, you're in luck <laughs> because <laughs> he did the most. Uh, I'm going to look like I'm going to try and get in his way, but then just kind of drift over to the sideline. It was so Yeah, it, they're like as bad as Tom Brady in blocking, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, he didn't even try to tackle him. Uh, so, yeah, you, you get the, you know, a poor, poor special teams. And, you know, it's – I look at our special teams and I look at them and we actually tried something different on our punt returns of this, which I thought was pretty neat is we kept Mike Edwards back as, 
not as a return guy, but as a deep blocker. Uh, he was like midfield on a punt, mm-hmm. and it was it was a really good idea. I was like, "Oh, that man, we should do that more often." But unfortunately, he didn't try to block anybody. <sighs> he just kind of watched him go by. Yeah, that's that's the issue with our special teams. It's not the scheme. It's not the designs. It's not anything like that. It's the effort. These guys just do. The only one is Ryan Smith. You know, I mean, so some of the guys, you know, they they hustle out there and all that. But for the mass majority of them, just it's like they're scared to block or tackle. You know, so. That's got to get corrected. It's definitely the weakest link on our, our thing. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, to add more to the special teams, you know, suck up, missed a field goal, and an extra point. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, he's been great for us this year, and I hope we re-sign him. But, uh, yeah, special teams let us down in that game. But <laughs> whatever, we get seven points. I mean, okay. it, I know. Like, if that's the game that they do it in, I'm like, Exactly. Okay. That's what I said you about know? suck up. Well, he could have missed everything. And I'd I be know. like, eh, it's the time to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And it's the one time, like, people aren't going to be screaming for your job at that point. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Like, the fan base, yeah. like, it's not even a blip on their radar, I feel like. No, uh-uh. No, if we would have lost it because of him, mm-hmm. then it would have been a different story. Yeah. Did, now, you remember hearing the guy, Okwara? I had never heard of him before. And I swear to God, I heard his name, like, all game long. I kept he defensive going, hmm. back? What is a he? defensive lineman. Okay. Okwara. They kept saying Okwara, Okwara. And I was like, well, who is this Okwara? And why do they keep saying his name so much? Well, one, well, besides the fact that he was making plays, there's two of them. There's two Okwaras. Oh, are on they brothers? The Detroit Lions. I think, I, they're bro- I think that was in Scott Smith's preview. Okay. I had no idea. Yeah. There was a, a, yeah. a Romeo and something, Okwara. One plays left defensive end, the other one plays right defensive end. It was like, <laughs> it was confusing as crap. That's so cool. Yeah. So that's why you kept hearing Okwara's name all the time because there's two of them, you know, mm-hmm. and they, they both basically play the same position. Uh, yeah, Julian and Romeo. Huh. Uh, Julian is a rookie. He plays left defensive end. Romeo played right defensive end. Uh, the 95 gave Worfs. He was a handful for Worfs. Really? Yeah, Okwara. Uh, Romeo Okwara. Uh, let me see. Oh, oh, and then I talked about Chase Daniels with the metronome arms in the I'm because I, I, I watch all this game tape and I'm constantly having to mark when the play starts. Mm-hmm. Uh, I watch the quarterbacks a lot and I'm big into reading tells. If I can pick up a tell on a quarterback, if he's going to let me know when the ball is going to snap, it makes my job a lot easier. Yeah. And man, that Chase Daniels has a huge tell. Matt Ryan is, is a guy. He's got a huge tell too. Uh, I think I've talked about it here. On yeah, the he dips his butt a little bit. He dips his head, spreads his legs real quick. Yeah, you know, um, Chase Daniels does this thing with his arms where he has him by his side, and he'll swing it forward one time, and then swing it forward another time, and that's when he'll hike the ball. It's on the, the up the part second of the second one? swing. Yeah, huh. and our defensive line picked up on that, <laughs> uh, and they were just you know a split second. Faster than normal, which is deadly mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, with our yeah. defensive line. Uh, but you could actually see them uh, start to go before the ball was snapped. You know, so oh. that was interesting. Yeah, huge tail, huge. I, I I find it hard to believe that you know a quarterbacks coach or something hasn't stepped in and said, "Yo, dude, <laughs> everybody knows when you're getting ready to snap the ball because <laughs> you do that metronome on crap." <laughs> Uh, JPP had a fantastic game again. Fantastic. Absolutely incredible. I don't know how this guy does that. I don't either. And I mean, he just goes the whole season. Mm-hmm. It's like he never runs out of energy. He's never hurt. Yeah. And it's like he just plays at the same level all the time. Yeah. And it's not like he's out there uh, being you know, a braggart about it or anything like that. I mean, he's very confident, that's for sure. But he's not a showboater mm-hmm. or anything. You know, it's not, he, he's just, it's like he's doing it because, I don't know, he reminds me of like a special forces guy. He's like, you know, that just, that just makes me tougher. <laughs> you know, the more, <laughs> the more you hurt me, the stronger I get. Yeah. You know? And he like lives for that mess. Yeah, you just can't stop. I mean, he just, he just never stops. Yeah. Uh, I counted, he had four tipped balls. Yeah, and it didn't show up in the stats, but I was looking and I was like, yeah, he got his hand on that ball. I'm pretty dang sure. 
And then again, I was like, oh, it looks like he got another one. And then another one. And I was like, holy crap. Now, he gets a lot of tipped balls because if you watch him, if he doesn't get to the quarterback, he's jumping, you know, to the, mm-hmm. when the quarterback throws it. And ball. he's so tall and he's got those mm-hmm. long arms, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Golston got a tipped ball, a batted okay. ball. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, JPP Is was Chase just. Is Chase Daniel like a little guy? I don't know. <laughs> got to look at the stats. Like, I wonder if he was just not throwing very high. Yeah. You know, over the line, <laughs> like Drew Brees. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Levante David, you know, we've been talking about him and I've been really worried about him. Well, I ain't worried no more. Whatever it was he was having issues with, it seems to be gone. He played really good in this game. And that that one where he's ripped the ball out, got that forced fumble, I think mm-hmm. it was the first play in the second half. Oh, God, that was a beautiful, beautiful play by him. He had a an offensive lineman that pulled and – David was coming around the back end, and so the offensive lineman needed to clear David out of the way. Mm-hmm. And it did work. <laughs> I mean, David, th- this offensive lineman was running at, you know, pretty good clip. You know, at, you know he's moving forward fast, mm-hmm. and he's a big dude. And David put his shoulder into that guy and lifted him off the ground. What? Yeah, it was, it was I was like, whoa. And, but not only that, David kept full, complete control of his body. You know, we talk about this all the time. David mm-hmm. is just a master at this stuff. And uh, he, he, he put his shoulder into the guy, stopped the guy dead in his tracks, you know, and, and basically lifted him up off the ground and then jumped around him, grabbed the running back and ripped the ball out of his head. <laughs> what? I'm like, whoa, that's like superhero stuff. <laughs> you know? Was that the play that we challenged? Like, did they not call yeah. it? Yeah, I think they I think, didn't call it a fumble. They said he was down. I think so. Yeah, okay. I think we challenged it. Yeah, they said he was down. We I haven't watched him. the game since last weekend. Oh, you got to watch it. I Good know. Good game. I know. Watch us beat people down. I love I that. Know. Place. Yeah, so it, it makes re- me a little sad for them. Oh God, <laughs> <laughs> women. <laughs> uh, the whole time I watched it, I'm like, you rip their arms off, <laughs> grind them in the dust. Uh, so it, seeing David back at full speed, you know, he was running around the field. He was involved in a lot of stuff. It was so good to see. I don't know what was going on with him, but it seems like he's getting over it. He did have one play where he, he did the worm. He did, oh, went to make a tackle and missed. And I don't know what how it happened, but his arms ended up beside him. And he face planted. <laughs> it bounced. And his body, like, did the wave motion. <laughs> Oh my god, I was laughing so hard. I I hated to put that on the video too, but I I couldn't pass it out. I was like, man, that was that was too good. Uh, like I said, I I was really expecting to see Detroit look like crap on defense. You know, I I, I really expected to see them just running around back there with the chi- like chickens with their heads cut off. But it, it it wasn't that bad. It got worse in the second quarter or in the second half. Actually, yeah. the first half they played a lot better. The second half it just seemed like they were so despondent. You know, they were just, it was like every time we throw a touchdown on them, they would just kind of mope off the field. You know, you weren't, oh, you weren't seeing them go, dang it, or yelling at each other. Yeah, you know? They'd care, just all turn really. around, put their heads down, and shuffle back. It's amazing to me that the coaching staff like made such a difference, you know, like not having their regular coaching staff. Yeah, I guess. I guess that made a difference. But they, they weren't as horrible as I thought they were going to be. And it, or that the score showed. Yeah, right, right. It was uh, Tom Brady was just lighting them up and our receivers were catching the ball. But not only that, our running game was killing it. I mean, we had huge holes. Uh, Donovan Smith created a huge hole one time. That was, I was just like, wow, you could drive literally a convoy of trucks. To <laughs> and it was all Donovan Smith. He did it. He, had, he actually had, they had Cameron Brait in as a fullback, right? So he's supposed to be the lead blocker. Nah, he couldn't get a block in because Donovan Smith was blocking everybody. <laughs> he blocked like three people. Did he pull? No. Oh. No, he was just like, well, I'm going to go over here to help my pet block. <laughs> and he helped knock that guy down. Then he looked over here and was like, oh, here's a guy. And Cameron Brake was running towards that guy. Oh. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Donovan good. Smith hit him and knocked the guy off about oh. like three feet. And then Cameron Brake pushed him. And the guy ended up 20 feet away from the play. Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, I think it was... Uh, Fournette, no, no, I think it was Vaughn that was running there. It was like he had like he had uh, Brait and Donovan Smith just clearing this huge hole for him. <laughs> it was 
It was insane. Yeah, we the our run game was just playing crazy stupid. Imagine what it would have been if Ronald Jones was there. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, so real happy about that, but I I was kind of surprised at how good Detroit looked. I really expected to see them look really, really bad, but especially in the first half, man. I mean, they were they were. You are really tired. I'm sorry. They uh. They, they, you know, they were sticking to our receivers and, and doing a good job, but they just couldn't. You, nobody could have stopped those passes. Nobody. It was, it was impossible. I mean, they were pinpoint accurate. It's crazy. It, it, it was crazy. It was crazy. Really you know, crazy. in this late in the season, I mean, that's phenomenal. Know, Every right? The question yeah. was, does he have the arm strength to last a whole season? Yeah, and here he is throwing 50-yard bombs I know. four times a game. Week 16. <laughs> Week 16. Like, what the fuck? It was awesome. Look at insane. He had and then we got to go to the playoffs. I mean, we're going to the playoffs like that. Playoffs? Playoffs? Yeah. yeah. Uh, he had, what, 600 yards in four quarters? It's a it's a record. Nobody's ever had that much. You know, for t- the last two quarters of the Atlanta game and then two quarters of the Detroit game, he had, a, I think it was like 680 yards. It was insane. So, Yeah. And we're doing exactly what we need to do going into the playoffs. We're clicking. We're connecting. Everybody's mm-hmm. getting uh, on the same page. So I'm very, very excited about that. Okay, so uh, uh, Donovan Smith, he had a pretty good game. He was – and they took him out in the second half. It was strange. They took Tom Brady out, Donovan mm-hmm. Smith, and Allie Marpet, and that was it. And they put in uh, Stinney for Marpet mm-hmm. and Josh Wells for – Donovan Smith and you know Josh Wells he he had a tough time but <clears throat> again it's good he needs the snaps he needs the reps. yeah I mean maybe that's why they did it maybe it wasn't so much it. about Donovan yeah. and Allie yeah but Donovan was playing very aggressive in this game for the <laughs> first half he was like, yeah no he was he was like actually stepping and attacking people and he really? started doing that more this year and I really like to see it because when he does it it's kind of scary <laughs> He's a fierce dude. Like Jensen's rubbing off on him a little yeah, bit. Yeah, right. Well, I think they're enjoying blocking for Brady because yeah. it's an easy job. You know, you mm-hmm. just keep guys from getting to that one spot for two and a half seconds. You're good. Yeah. The one uh, we had talked about this in the uh, instant reaction. We said Brady had three sacks. No, he didn't. Brady had one sack. Uh, he got sacked one time. It was uh, a. The other quarterback. What was his name? Gabbert. Gabbert. He had two sacks. Oh, okay. And watching Gabbert, it was just so crazy. Well, you know, Gabbert's not a bad quarterback, but watching his pocket presence compared to Brady, it's just <laughs> like, you're just like, wow, man, it's just, it's so crazy. You know, it's, it's, Brady's just so good in the pocket. But the one sack that they got him with, it was Brady's fault. <laughs> it was like, oh, I was like, no. what? You never do this. He held the ball too long. Well, he he pumped like he was going to throw it, and then he pulled it down, and he you could see he was going, "Oh, what do I do?" And then he was <laughs> he was like, "Oh, I got somebody." And so then he stepped up to throw it, and he was already too far up in the pocket, and then he stepped up more and went right into the arms of somebody. Like yeah. walked right in. Walked somebody. right into it. I was like, "Pulled oh, the Jameis." Yeah, pulled the Jameis. At least he didn't pump fake to the guy he was going to try to throw it to. <laughs> There's right. that. Give the defenders <laughs> enough time to get over there and <laughs> intercept the ball. Uh, yeah, so the first play of the second half is when we got the fumble by David. Okay. And uh, we had shut their offense out. We shut their offense out the whole game. Um, Blaine Gabbert came in at a quarterback. So Cup missed an extra point. Uh, they kept doing those cut blocks on their offensive line. They did it like four or five times. I've never seen it that much ever, especially since – you know, the 80s, maybe early 90s. It used to be a big thing, you know, but it's been a while since I've seen it. And I haven't seen it this much, maybe ever. Uh, let me see. Uh, Stinney did okay. Uh, Wells did, you know, Wells. Mm-hmm. And uh, Gabbert was just, it, it was so crazy seeing the difference between Gabbert and Brady because it was really good because you know, Gabbert replaced Brady, so you could see him going up against the same team, same players, everything. It was it was really good. And, you know, Gabbert's not, you know, he wasn't horrible, but just compared to Brady, his pocket presence was, uh, you know, he'd get skittish and, you know, kind mm-hmm. of run around. He ended up yeah. running a few times. And his accuracy was just 
not not there. You know, you, you, you've been watching these pinpoint accurate passes all game, and then all of a sudden Gabbert gets in there, and you know the balls are receivers are having to you know reach out and grab it or jump up and everything. And you're like, uh, you know, man, or you know he's throwing them behind him. He did that a lot, threw it behind the receiver. Mm-hmm. So there was a a big difference in the two quarterbacks. And and then the Lions put Blau in. But why did they do that? Was, yeah, they pulled Chase Daniel. Yeah. Did they, they pulled him because of performance? He wasn't hurt, right? I don't think so. Probably his pride. Pride mm-hmm. was hurt. And uh that's about it. You know, we uh you know, we we like to say, did we win it? Did we lose it? Did they lose it? Whatever. No, I'm saying, no, this game, we definitely won it. I mean, it was, they didn't, they were not a crappy team like I thought they were going to be. Mm-hmm. You know, they were mid-bottom, you know, mm-hmm. maybe, I wouldn't say top-bottom, but, you know, I mean, they're not, they're not a good team. But it wasn't like, like I said, you know, we just had wide open receivers all over the place and, you know, we, we were just picking and choosing who to throw it to, whatever. Uh, you know, they, they, they put up a, a pretty good uh, show, I guess. You know, we were just, you just couldn't stop us. There's nobody, nobody could stop that. There is no way anybody could have stopped. They might have, what did we score, 40 points in the first half? I think if you would have put the de- best defense in the league out there, we probably would have scored 32. <laughs> There's no way you could have stopped that. There's no way. I mean, some of those passes, I kept rewinding and looking and going, wow. How would you even stop? How would you block? The, you don't, there's no way to get to it. <laughs> it was just, it was crazy stupid. So, fun game to watch. Our defensive line again. They were just mauling people. Really fun to watch. Uh, the JPP was just on point. It was good to see David back to his old self. You know, so it was good stuff. It was good, it was a good game. I would say. Watch the uh, things I found interesting. It, I put a lot of stuff in there that I've been wanting to show, and now I had this game. I've kind of felt like I have an opportunity, you know, like uh, the Sue on the sidelines and uh, oh, cool. things like the pre-snap reads and stuff. So, anyway, it was fun. I, I I enjoyed watching this game, and like you said, normally a win, I don't get much out of it. I'm like, mm-hmm. eh. yeah. But this one was very interesting. Very interesting. Awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. No, we we were a good team. <laughs> we played. <laughs> we played very well. Yeah. We we're a going team. into the playoffs like convincingly, right? As and, a playoff team, and we're one of the few teams that are doing that. I mean, Kansas City struggling. Yeah. You've got Green Bay struggling. You've got uh, Pittsburgh struggling. New Orleans. New Orleans is struggling. I we're mean, the only one that I can think of that's getting better. It, yeah. Going into we're the playoffs. peaking at the end when it's important. Playoffs, yes, man. playoffs. We're going to the playoffs. 13 years. Yeah. And it's been, what, seven? 2002 was the last time we won a playoff game, so it's been 18 years. 18 Ooh. years. Wow. Yeah. So hopefully if we win tomorrow or if we win Sunday against the Falcons, then we will have the fifth seed, which means we will play the winner of the NFC East, which could be the, the Giants, Redskins, or Dallas. Depending on how they yeah. all shake out this hey, weekend. Hey, I've got the playoff stuff for uh, for this weekend. So let me go through that really quick. Okay. Uh, and because it kind of ties into everything, all the news I've got. Um, Arizona can get in. They're eight and seven. They play the Rams, so they just need a win or a tie and a Chicago loss. Chicago is eight and seven. They play the Packers. Like all of these, ha- it's it's just crazy. <laughs> There's so many important games, which is awesome. Like yeah. this late in the season. There's only four teams that have clinched a playoff berth, and we're one of them, baby. What? Uh, the Packers have the NFC North. The Saints have the <clears throat> NFC South. Seahawks have NFC West. And then we have secured a playoff berth. But everybody else, they're all fighting. Hmm. I know. Feels good. I know. It feels so good. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So the Bears can get in at eight and seven, but they play Green Bay. Green Bay needs to win. So Chicago can get in with a win 
an Arizona loss or a tie. Chicago ties and Arizona ties. Green Bay, they need to win to get the first round by. They will clinch it. So both those teams have something to fight for and they're playing. If each Green other. Bay wins, they clinch the first round by. Yes. With a win or a tie or with a Seattle loss or tie. Seattle? Yes. Because Seattle. Hold on, I'll get to Seattle in a second. The Cowboys are playing the Giants. They will clinch the East if they win and Washington loses or ties. Or if they tie and Washington loses. So so the Giants need Washington to lose either way. I mean, yeah, yeah. So they the can't. Giants need to win and Washington lose. Okay, so Giants can't the control same, their own destiny. Right, and it's the same with Dallas. So Dallas. So Washington's the only one that controls their own destiny. If they win, they're in. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and they're playing Philadelphia. <laughs> I know. Oh, Philadelphia is not going to take that. They gonna they want to take them out. They want to be spoilers. I know. Trust me on this one. I know. That's not going to be an easy game. <laughs> I know. Uh, the Rams. They are in with a win or a tie or Chicago loss or tie. They play Arizona. So Rams so, are a win and they're in. Yeah. Like, and so is Arizona. So whoever wins that game going to the playoffs. New Orleans, uh, they clinch the first round by with a win, a Green Bay loss, and Seattle wins. So they need help to get that first round by. Well, All, like it just has to shake that shake out exactly right. They win, Green Bay loses, Seattle wins. I prefer them to not win. Yeah, and listen, Alvin Kamara just got put on the COVID list. He tested positive. So what is not, going on? Everybody. I know. So not only is he not going to play Sunday, but he probably can't play. If if they play Saturday in the wild card round, he can't play. No, because it's a ten ten day quarantine, depending on. So it depends on when you tested positive. He tested positive today, Friday. So he won't, if he, um, if they make it to the wild card round and play on Saturday, he's not going to play. But mm. if they play on Sunday, he can be back for that game. That's insane. So it just depends. Uh, all right. Seattle, they clinch a first round by, they're 11 and 4. So I'm like, they're the worst 11 and 4 team I've watched. Yeah, they started off strong, but here, right lately, they've been horrible. Well, and they play shitty teams, I think. Um, so they clinch a first round bye with a win, a Green Bay loss, and New Orleans loss. So they need a lot of help. So yeah. Green Bay is, they win and they clinch a first round bye. Green Bay is a pivotal game for the. Yeah, yeah, but the other two, New Orleans and Seattle, they both need help to get the first round bye. Yeah. So who do we want? Do we want to play Washington? I'm assuming we're going to beat the, the Falcons. But if if it does come down to that, who do we want to play? Do we want to play Washington, Dallas, or the Giants? I would rather play Dallas because it's indoor stadium. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I don't want to have to go to New York. It's cold. And yeah. uh, Washington, it's a little chilly up there. So yeah. I don't know. Good uh, point. Yeah. Well, and it's outside, and you just you just don't know mm -hmm. as far as weather goes. We're kind of near there, not too close, but our weather has just been awful here lately. There's rain, there's so much rain uh, and cold. So uh, there we go. And so some of my news was related to playoffs, which mm -hmm. is why I wanted to go over that first. Okay. Jared Goff underwent surgery on his thumb, and so backup quarterback John Wolford will start on Sunday, and they need a win. Ugh. So, so it was it his thumb? Yeah, remember during the game. Yeah, is he going to be able to play in the playoffs if they make? I don't know. Ugh. That's a good question. That'll be a follow-up. Uh, so, and then... Of course, I covered Camara with the positive COVID test. Uh, Raheem Morris interviewed for the Falcons head coaching job today. Really? He did. Good for him. Yeah. I'd love to see him get it, to be honest with you, because <laughs> I think we'd have 
two easy victories a year for a long time. <laughs> I love this tweet from Ren over at Peter Cast. He tweeted the other day that um, they pulled Raheem from the wide receivers coach to defensive coordinator. And then after he was pulled, Calvin Ridley has like the the season of his career, like best best season he's ever had. And then Dan Quinn gets fired and because of a horrible defense. And they move Raheem to head coach away from defense. And I think that they, I think he said they were doing, I forget what the second part of that tweet was, but it was like everywhere that they pulled Raheem from, he, that position did it remarkably did better, better. Yeah. yeah once he left they're like well, let's do this for Raheem I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um the Bucks signed quarterback Drew Stanton to our practice squad of course he played for BA at Arizona that was earlier last week I think or earlier this week uh so he would replace Josh Rosen who got snatched snatched up by San Francisco <laughs> <clears throat> Todd Bowles was working remotely this week after coming into contact with someone who had um who was believed to be a false positive and <clears throat> today the team announced that he's been cleared and will return to the f- facility on Saturday and will coach on Sunday. So we get Todd Bowles back. Which brings me to our next little bit of news, a debacle. Tobacco. Tobacco. Is that like tobacco? Whatever. Uh, Devin White has been put on the COVID list. This is as of tonight, January 1st, about 4 o'clock. And he did get a positive test, so he he is out for 10 days. That means we won't have him for the playoffs. Well, he apparently tested positive on Thursday. So, so we might get him back. We so. might get him back, but he's going to have no practice. He can't travel with the team. He will basically like have to show up by himself at the stadium, <laughs> like wherever we play. And then Shaq Barrett was negative, but was identified as a close contact. So he is also on the COVID reserve list. And even if he continues to test negative, he still has to miss five days. So, what? Yeah. So we're not going to have him for the game? No, we won't have him for Sunday. Um, oh, what the? F- but he could be back for playoffs. Just because he was near somebody that yeah that was positive. And uh, is the, it was it Devin White that yeah. he was near? Mm-hmm. And then um, oh, it gets worse though because okay, so Devin posted on Twitter and then deleted this, but thank God for the Bucks media people. I'm going to give them props for this because they screenshotted it and shared it all, <laughs> shared it with us. The internet's <laughs> forever, man. I know, <laughs> preserving it for posterity. Uh, Devin White said, please stop tweeting me. I have had the same routine all season long, going to practice and straight home. I feel perfectly fine and I will be ready to go for the playoff game. Well, then... Shaq Barrett's wife on Instagram made a post and it said, can't control other people's action, just our own, regardless how, of how safe we've been and following every precaution possible. Sometimes people choose other choices that result in unfair circumstances, but rest assured to everyone asking, we were not the ones who were reckless and exposed the team. So to the fans mad, some things are out of our control. It is what it is. Shaquille will be back for the playoffs. So, Shaquille Barrett, what's he got? Nine and a half sacks? Uh, yeah, nine. Nine? I think JPP has nine. We were going to have mm-hmm. this week. Yeah, so week. we're not going to have. Yeah, we were going to maybe have three players to break 10 sacks. Mm-hmm. Uh, the JPP's at nine and a half. Mm-hmm. Shaq Barrett's at nine. And Devin White is at what, eight and a half? Or is he nine? Yeah, I can't remember. They're so all those, close. So those two are gone. We're not going to get that. And I guarantee you there's a clause in his contract, an incentive, that if he gets 10 sacks, you know, he, he's probably going to get an extra million or something like that. Oh, my God, I bet he is furious. Well, obviously, 
you know if the wife gets involved and there's money involved in there somewhere. <laughs> so she she is pissed. She was looking forward to a big ring or something, oh, a nice vacation. Oh. Well, she's pregnant. So I'm sure that she, you know, it's very stressful for them to think that he's been a close contact and, you know, he's in the house and they have, I think, four kids. So, uh, you know, I know as a mother, I'd be a little freaked out mm. in a way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't throw that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but then, and then Steve McClendon is also gone to the reserve list today. So, actually, that's good because I want to see Cleo Davis and Ledbetter get more reps. Uh, Ledbetter is out. What? Sir. Yes. For what? He's got a calf injury. He has not practiced all week. Oh my god! I know. <laughs> well, that's going on? I told you guys this was organic. <laughs> 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 this is why I wanted to do this. Um. Uh, but oh, the, I have not told you the good news. We signed Jack Sitchi from this Patriots practice squad yeah. to come in and fill in fill at for, linebacker. Yeah, but we also have Kevin Minter, and then at outside linebacker we have Anthony Nelson. Mm-hmm. So we got that going for us. But yeah, uh, per Greg Allman with McClendon out, and then Jeremiah Ledbetter ruled out. Uh, Khalil Davis, who's played in only one game this season, is now the top reserve on the defensive line. It's going to be interesting. It will be interesting. Yeah. Nacho is going to get a full game without a little, that much rotation in there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's a good thing. I mean, um, it, I mean, it's not good that we're missing those people, especially, you know, uh, Shaq Barrett is disappointing, but, um, you know, we're in the playoffs no matter what. So, Mm -hmm. uh, and I still feel like without those guys, we still have a good shot at winning the game. You know, if it were like Tom Brady, I'd be like, oh no, yeah, we're going to lose. Yeah. But, and it's really a lot of it's going to hinge on how Atlanta comes into the game Mm -hmm. and they have nothing to play for except keeping their jobs which i doubt very seriously if anyone's going to keep their job yeah and uh i mean the team as a whole they are a fourth overall right now in draft picks in the draft they could move up a little bit maybe i don't know (laughs) could they but yeah so you know they they don't have a whole lot of incentive to play well you know uh matt ryan's gone you know, he's mm-hmm. not going to be there next year. Uh, you know, the coaching staff, they're auditioning. Everybody's going to be auditioning, I think. So yeah, it's not going to so be a cohesive might. unit, I wouldn't think. And, you know, I don't know. But it might be just great for them to try and spoil us. And, you know, they're competitors. Probably. But yeah. how hard are they really going to play? Right. And Julio Jones is out. I mean, it seems like he's been out all year. I know. So people were saying they should have traded him three years ago. Yeah, because they're talking. So they're talking about they might trade him this off season. Mm-hmm. There's been rumors. Yeah. So that's going to be interesting. Yeah, we don't know how they're going to play. You know, so our uh, d- uh, deficiencies on defense there might not be such a big deal. Well, in the last game, the defensive line is really what turned it around, yeah. and Shaq Barrett is part of that. Mm-hmm. But we still have the other two guys, Sue and JPP, who yeah. might could take Shaq's replacement and, you know, kind of, I mean, it's not a replacement for Shaq, but they might be able to say, hey, you know, you need to do this and kind of direct that person. Yeah, yeah. Or the, just set the edge. That's what they're going to ask him. Yeah. Just set the edge. Just don't let anybody run past you over there. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> they'll uh, they'll do the rest. It's funny because Ralph and I were just talking today about this, and I was like, mm-hmm. you know, it is fishy because the Alex Mack, the offensive lineman for the Falcons, he got put on the COVID reserve list, uh, and he. Um, he actually caused the organization to have to work remotely yesterday because of the case. 
And I was like, wow, like this happens to everyone that we play. Mm-hmm. Like we have not had. And it was like a little conspiracy theorist there. I'm like, what are we doing? I know. You were like, who's, <laughs> are we giving them COVID are we or something? Them COVID? <laughs> Just the offensive lineman I know. and our opposing we keep team. Doing, I mean, it's so mm-hmm. many of them. And of course, I don't think that's really happening, but wouldn't that be funny to find out? I mean, not funny. Uh, but then today, it was like, boom, boom, boom. boom, boom. boom. Devin White, Shaq Barrett, yeah. London. I was like, ah, oh, crap. crap. I jinxed us. Sorry, guys. Yeah. It's my fault. Molly's fault. You put that out in the fault. universe. But with Alex Mack, he didn't play last week because of a concussion, and his contract is up this year. Yeah, that's the last be. year of his contract. And so last week, his heir apparent, Mac Hennessy, played in his place. So they weren't even sure if um, Alex Mack, like coming back from the concussion, if they were going to even play him because they're like, why bother? Mm-hmm. And then he got the COVID. So now he's on the list. He's on the list. Yeah, the Atlanta Falcons, this is, a, this is the last time you'll see, well, we're going to see them as. You know, with Matt Ryan at the helm and Julio Jones and Ridley. So yeah, it's going to be so strange. They're going to be in rebuilding mode next year. And then when the Panthers are going to be fighting for the bottom for the next few years. Mm-hmm. Rebuild mode. Rebuild and mode. And then the Saints will be right behind them. Well, and then, you know, the Bucks. what are we doing at quarterback once Brady is up? Oh, he's staying with us forever. <laughs> he's going to be 60 years old after throwing 90-yard <laughs> bombs. Oh, well. <laughs> Oh, I wanted to put this out there. This uh, I'm done with the preview aside from this. Uh, Gronk has been healthy all season, which he oh. credits the Veterans TV-12? Day. Oh. Well, no, he gets Veterans Day is off here, oh. which uh, oh. I guess New England didn't do that. But he said uh, it's only the second time in his career that he's played a full season. Yeah. I, mean, I think crazy? The, I think the first and, one was the, his rookie year. I know, and we had talked about that when we got him. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, he's good for like half a season. Yeah. Yeah, we had – remember last year we had a lot of problems with our receivers with leg cramps and all that good stuff. And mm-hmm. Aaron's was like, well, maybe I've been running them too hard. <clears throat> we haven't had that that problem this year. Yeah. We had Godwin hurt his hand. He was out for a week, one week with a broken hand. And then uh, Evans got – the uh, hammy. Yeah, so he was out for a week or two. But other than that, we, we've been pretty healthy. Well, wasn't – Chris had a, a – didn't he have a groin injury too? I mean, he was injured like at the beginning of the season. That mm-hmm. was kind of an issue because Brady, you know – Yeah, they couldn't oh, get Quite a few – yeah, it yeah. couldn't get in sync with everybody. And um, so – but other than that, I mean, we haven't had any major, major issues like we were last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, correct, sir. Yeah, uh, you know the Illinois college football team that Lovey mm-hmm. Smith coached tanked. at. Yeah, he tanked. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and I heard that he punted on fourth and goal or some crap like that. Yeah, just what? Yeah, yeah. Does he, he hate football? Apparently, <laughs> but yeah, they fired him and. Okay. They, they got a new coach, December 19th, mm-hmm. Brett Bielman, something like that. Robert Agoya has been, uh, he's on the Patriots Pactor squad now. They signed him. I had seen that. Yeah. So good for him for getting another shot. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Vernon Hargreaves, uh, <clears throat> according to Mike Clay from NFL, the most fantasy points allowed in coverage in 2019 was Vernon Hargreaves at 236. And in 2020, it's been Vernon Hargreaves at 190.8. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. I'm not too upset we got rid of him. Oh, gosh. What a good move. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Not a, well, I was not mad about that at all. Uh, the J.C. Treader, the uh, president of the NFLPA, is saying that he thinks that we should – Continue with the uh, this this off season program that we did this year. He said, "There's no reason to go back to the old off season program." Which, yeah, and I'm like, "What? That's are you on drugs?" Insane. 
I mean, yeah, maybe not have four preseason games or something, but you got to have preseason games. You got to do it. You got to like do it. One or two, at least. Yeah, at least. Please. Yeah. Don't do this. Yeah, so who, who knows how that's going to work out. Well, they better be giving us an extra game then. Yeah, they, 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 well, they're talking about doing that. They were, we're going to have 17 yeah. games next yeah. year. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, let me see. We've got Dwayne Haskins. How about that story? Oh, my God. What happened there? What is going on? I now, just need, I wish we had a media that could tell us <laughs> what is happening. Really? Like, what? I, I'm reading the New York Post, right? And Washington Post? Yeah, the Washington Post. And they've always hated Dan Snyder mm-hmm. since since the, since he became the owner of the Washington Redskins. And they're talking, the, the, the article was on the reasons why Dwayne Haskins was kicked off the team. So I was like, oh, I might get some information here. So I go there and the first like three paragraphs, all they're talking about is Dan Snyder. And they're like, Dwayne Haskins was Dan Snyder's guy. Uh, he... Th- uh, Dan Schneider forced the coaches to pl- play Dan uh, Dwayne Haskins. Said they said uh, even John Gruden put him in in a preseason game last year, uh, and he threw three interceptions. And he he said he put him in just so that Dan Snyder could see that he wasn't ready or something like this. Anyhow, I'm like, what does this got to do with Dan Snyder? You know, it's just like, but anyhow, the whole article they <clears throat> it was. Exactly the issue I have with broadcasters. You know, if you ever watch NFL broadcast, which I think everybody listening to this has, mm-hmm. especially Chris Collins, where he's the worst for this. It's like if a guy makes a great catch, it's like, oh, fantastic job. That's so and so and so and so. And, uh, you know, he's he's one of the best receivers out there. And he's he's known for catching passes like that. And I was talking to him earlier today in the pregame meeting. And he said, today I'm going to catch a pass exactly like that. <laughs> you know. And you're like, wait a minute, you can't do that. <laughs> you know, but Does they only do it. Fact check these guys. I know. The, no, you know. I would love, I would love for somebody on from the sidelines or the a coach come out and say, "Remember all that crap that broadcaster said? I said during the broadcast, I never said any of that. It's I don't know where they're getting it from, but you know, so they they never do it before the game. I would love to see them go." All right, before the game, they go, all right, here's what I want to do. I want you to look at this player here, and he might do a play like this later in the game. He's an outstanding guy, but basically the same stuff they say after they do the play, say it before the game or before he does the play. It's, it's easy to do it after the play. Anyhow, New York Post or the Washington Post did this, you know, where they're, they're like, there's been reports that he had a bad, they talk about Dwayne Haskins, there was reports that he had a bad work ethic and that he was late for game for meetings and everybody was just shocked at how he didn't take things serious, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, where were, where were y'all at before all this happened? It was a shock to everybody, I think, that they just, you know, cut him and mm-hmm. nobody picked him up. I know. He saw, he cleared waivers, he's a free agent. Yeah, so, you know, it's like, what what, what is going on there? We'll never find out, you know, because for some reason, reporters yeah. don't like to do their job, <laughs> you know, and if somebody doesn't tell them what to say, they're not going to figure it out themselves. I don't know. I mean, apparently the guy's got some issues. You know, he had that picture with the strippers in his mm-hmm. hotel room, and but everybody was more upset that they weren't wearing masks. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I, you know, I don't know. Maybe he got upset. That, uh, uh, that, you know, they pulled him out of the game and he just blew up. Who knows? Who knows? Well, we'll never know. We'll never know. You know, not unless a coach comes out and tells the reporter specifically. So, that's all I got. Okay. Um, I just find the whole thing really bizarre and... You know, you've heard all the alleged character issues, but I just feel like there's something else there that we're not getting the whole story. Mm -hmm. And especially with the Dan Snyder angle, they're really, I mean, they've, they've hated him for years, the media has in that area, and I'm not really clear why, but they brought in Ron Rivera, who they've made out Uh, like the savior of the organization. And it's just, I don't know if it's just like, 
you know, having a villain and a good guy like sells more papers. I mm-hmm. don't know what it is, yeah. but the whole thing there is super weird. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just and the and the thing with Dwayne Haskins, I'm just there's got to be more there, and the league all knows it. Because apparently, yeah. apparently nobody picked him up. And nobody picked him up. So. But they, then again, is it is late in the year, and yeah, you know, who needs a quarterback at this point? So yeah, I don't know. I yeah. that's fair enough. There's plenty of, but it seems like somebody would have grabbed him cheap. Yeah, you know, he's still on his rookie contract. I know. I don't know. Yeah, so there had to be something there, and you know, it might have been his performance. To be honest with you, I'm not, I haven't watched him. Yeah, I don't so know either. He might be absolutely dog crap. <laughs> he could be. But, and a character issue to where it's not even really worth the trouble. Right. Yes. Uh, I just realized I forgot to go over the injury report. Uh, can you zip through it real quick? I can. Okay. Do it. Ready? Yes. Okay. Jeremiah Jeremiah Ledbetter has a calf injury. He's out, as we mentioned earlier. Carlton Davis with that groin injury. He was limited Wednesday, did not participate Thursday, and then was limited Friday. So he is doubtful. Uh, Steve McClendon, of course, is now out. Tom Brady, he had a Veterans Day off on Wednesday, so did not participate. It was not injury-related, and he's been a full participant all week, so he is fine. Don't panic. Mike Edwards has a hip injury. Of course, during the Detroit game, he was taken out and uh, did not come back in. So he was limited Wednesday and Thursday and was a full participant on Friday. Leonard Fournette has an abdomen injury. He was limited Wednesday and Thursday and a full participant Friday. Gronk had a Veterans Day off on Thursday. It was not injury related. And then he returned on Friday, so he's good to go. Ronald Jones, they've had in practice. You know, he came back. He got off the COVID list and then he came back uh, with the pinky you know, that he just had operated on. He's wearing a glove where I guess they put the two fingers in one hole. So that's what he's doing for now. And he was limited Wednesday, but a full participant Thursday and Friday. So uh, that looks pretty good for him. JPP did not participate on Friday. He has a knee injury. He was limited Wednesday and Thursday, but, you know, he gets a Veterans Day. Every week. And then Sue had his Veterans Day on Friday where he did not participate. On the Falcons side, cornerback Darquez Dennard had a quad injury. He did not participate all week. He is out. What are we going to do without him? I don't know. Oh, no. That's Atlanta. I know. I was like, who? I know. (laughs) Uh, Julio Jones with the hammy. He did not practice. He is out. Wide receiver Brandon Powell. I went to school with a guy named Brandon Powell. You take it to him? No. Uh, he had a foot injury. He did not participate all week, and he is out. And then defensive end Charles Harris. This is not injury related, but I don't know what it is. So he did not participate all week, and he is questionable. Guard James Carpenter had a groin injury. He was limited all week. Defensive end John Kaminsky had a shoulder injury. He was limited all week. Defensive tackle Marlon Davidson had a knee injury. He was limited all week. Uh, center Mac Hennes- Matt Hennessy had a knee injury, but he was a full participant all week. This is the rookie that took over for Alex Mack. Tackle Jake Matthews. Uh, this was not injury-related mispractice on Friday, but it looks like he's a good to go. Defensive end Stephen Means had a hand injury. He was a full participant all week. Ugh, God, this name. Linebacker Foyer Olu- Olukun. <laughs> Never heard of him. Uh, had an ankle injury. He was limited all week. Running back Ido Smith had a rib injury. He was limited all week, which that's interesting. And then tight end Luke Stocker had an elbow injury, and he was limited all week. Interesting. So it's going to be an interesting game for any number of reasons. Saying hey, we need to win this, and we don't need to, but it'd be nice to win it. I, I want to go out with eleven wins. Mm-hmm. It's been a long time since we've had I that. Know, eleven and five. Oh, no. be awesome. And uh, you know, and a course, sweep of the Falcons. Beating the Falcons—it's nice. yeah. always fun. 
and the you know at home this is going to be at home uh and I, you know i'd like to see us just go out there and you know execute well you know that's that's what i'm looking for i'm looking for us to be better than we were last week yeah. last week we were really good oh you want to do a score prediction sure okay give what me you your got? score prediction i got to do one go first. first yeah Okay, uh, let me see. We're going to be out our defense a little bit, so that's going to hurt us. The, the Atlanta's going to score points. We know that. Uh, so I'm going to give them. Gosh, how many did they get last time? They were up on us. Jeez. It was only a couple of weeks ago, and I can't remember. I remember they were up on us by like 24 points? Yeah. 27? I think 27 points they were up on us at one point. Um, I think 21. And they ended up with 32? No. Yeah, I can't remember. <clears throat> Me neither. Gosh. Okay, so I'm going to give them 32 points. Okay. No. no. I'll say 20. Yeah, okay, 30. I'm, I'm going to go between 28 and 32. I'll say 30 points. Okay. And us uh, will probably end up pulling Brady in the third quarter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so... Let me see. Give, uh, giving them 30 points, I'll give us 40, 41. Wow. Okay. 41, 30. So, and you think that we're going to win? Great. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go with a 31 to 24. Bucks. Okay. Bucks got this. You think we're going to stop them from scoring, huh? 24 points, yeah. I think uh, I think that defensive line, our defensive line, I don't, I don't think they're going to play around this time. They ain't waiting for halftime. That's what okay. I think. They're going to step it up. Mm -hmm. I like that Khalil Davis. The little bit I've seen of him this year, he's been he was pretty good. And, oh God, I wish Ledbetter was playing. Man, that's really sucks that he's not going to be there. Yeah. Yeah. He played well uh, last week in his rotation role. I think he only had nine snaps or so, but... He does. He, he looks so much like Sue. Just his body and his style. You can tell he's learning a lot from Sue. A lot. A lot, of, a lot all these off defensive line guys have learned a lot from JPP, Sue, Barrett. Yeah. Uh, Nacho. I really I really like Nacho. God, he plays with so much energy. I mean, he's just, but he's kind of wild. So, <laughs> so, same with Golston. Golston's always been a you know, big, strong, long Mm -hmm. kind of guy who really comes in with a lot of power but he just has a hard time keeping his balance mm -hmm. he's just, he you know he'll bust through so fast or so <laughs> strong that you know he'll be he'll even easy going. to push over yeah <laughs> or yeah he'll stumble and fall <laughs> it happens to him a lot where he comes through so fast he just falls on his mm -hmm. face uh and nacho is the kind of the same way he's he's just very kind of frantic in his play you know he'll just be like blah, 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 and throwing guys and you know <laughs> like spinning an animal and, yeah I can't sort of remind <laughs> i i'd like to see him get more a little bit more um, focused, Measured. I guess. But I, I really like his energy. You know, he he's mm -hmm. really does cause havoc. So. Cool. Yeah. All right. I'm excited excite about it. I know. Guys, this is our last game. That's the, This is the great well, thing about the playoffs. The great and wonderful thing about the playoffs yeah. is you get one more you game. Get one more. <laughs> that's, I know. That's what it's all about. One more game. Yeah, because if the, this normally this is it. This is the last game, and no more football for Buccaneer fans. I but know. Now we get another game. We get one more at least. At least. And uh, I think we're going to get quite a few more. So, um, yeah. Uh, we got a real shot. We got a real shot. Ooh. Super Bowl. I am hopeful. Yeah, I'll tell excited. you what. If Brady can keep – Brady has not been the issue this year. I mean, he's had his problems, but he uh, – if, if the receivers can catch the ball. And they can all stay on the same page like they've been doing. Oh, man, we're we're gonna be unstoppable on offense. Oh and you know, if our defense, our defensive line can just keep doing what they're doing, I I, I don't see anybody that can beat us. Screw the Saints. Over. <laughs> I don't want to play them. I don't want to play them. Either. <laughs> Actually, I do want to play them. And I want to beat them. Maybe like it's a shame we couldn't play them in the first round when they don't have Camara. We've always kind of nullified him. He's never been no, a big not running. I mean, not receiving. We've yeah. nullified him running. The yeah. problem is he can catch it. Yeah. So. All right, All right. we're gonna wrap this up. We're gone over again. See, this is what happens when we don't do our podcast normally. When we do do one, we 
just end up getting on here and rambling. Whoa, 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 we got so much <laughs> to talk about. All right, guys, uh, this is it. This is the last game of the season. This is the game before the playoffs. What we want to do is look at this and see if we're uh, getting better or at least maintaining the connection between Brady and the receivers. Uh, got our running game still going strong. We don't want anybody to get hurt. Uh, oh, we got to talk about Mike. Mike's got to get his 40 yards to right. get his record. Yep, Michael and, uh, had the record for the most 1,000-yard season. I in cannot a row, wait. I just hope that they come out slinging it and he makes it immediately. Like, immediately. Mm-hmm. And uh, then they pull Mike and sit him for the rest of the game, let him rest. I don't want that because I haven't been fantasy football. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not the Sacco, so shut up. <laughs> I know. I had, I had uh, Gronkowski, Evans, Brady, suck up, and the Buccaneers defense on my fantasy football last week, and I destroyed everybody. I had like 200 points, and I had 190, something like that. It was it was great. It was great. And that was it with them pulling Brady in the second half. I mean, if I would, if he would have stayed in the second half, I, probably, I might would have broke 300 points. <laughs> I know. Somebody asked us in the YouTube comments, if they hadn't pulled Brady, would he have had like 80 points? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That would have been crazy. But it, I, I honestly, honestly don't feel that it was because Detroit sucked. Yeah. Uh, you know, I would, I'd say it if I saw it, but I didn't see it. You know, that I mean, you know, yes, they're not a great team and all that good stuff. But I mean, you just couldn't stop what Brady was doing. You know, there's and no defense for it. No defense for it. Nothing you could have done. It's perfect. And our receivers were catching them. That's a deadly combination. <laughs> Hope we can keep it up. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for us. Uh, wear your gear proud, man, and yeah. let's let's go. If, you, if you're down in Tampa and you can make it to the game, fill them stadiums. We Do don't want to it. see uh, Falcons fans out there. Don't be selling your tickets to Falcons fans. That's right. Give it to, give it to a homeless Buccaneer fan or that's something. True. Yeah. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for us. Till next time. Go Bucks.